Hi, Scott sort of. Orlin with Cinema Magazine. The movie The Incredibles Part 2. You've been waiting 14 years. This man is finally ready to deliver. Brad Bird, congratulations on the movie. What, do you, what advantage do you think as a filmmaker the waiting over a decade in bringing the story back to the screen? Uh, well, I think everybody's reasonably assured it's not a cash grab because it probably defies every logical uh, analyst's uh, expectation of when it should come out. Um, for me, it just it was important because Pixar uh, respects uh, filmmakers enough to say, when you're ready, we're ready. And I like that. And um, I hope they... Uh, are happy with the movie, I think they are. Audience member who saw the film, I have to say, I was enthralled. I thought it was terrific. Oh, thanks. What was wonderful to me about it, because it starts out on this great action sequence, and you think, okay, this is gonna drive it, but as the movie unfolds, it's really a family story. I mean, about a father trying to connect with his children, and about a mother fl trying to get her independence. Right. Um, and trying to re reawaken that part of her that was a you know serious professional. So I think that people will connect with it because a lot of people have two parents that work and are used to people switching roles and kind of, uh, it's a lot to raise a family and, and you know, uh, dads have to participate too. I would love to, the, the special skill set, and I don't want to give too much away, with Jack-Jack. Yes. What were the plethora of possibilities? Because this kid could almost do anything. I think that um, part of the, th the idea that I think works in our favor with the concept is that the superpowers are not just superpowers. They represent people at different uh, roles within the family and at different parts of their life. You know, the dads are always expected to be strong. Moms are expected to be pulled in 20 different directions at once. Teenagers are defensive and, and, and insecure, so her powers are invisibility and, and force fields. Uh, Ten-year-olds are energy balls who want to press every button and open every door. And babies are unrealized potential. They could be nothing. They could be everything. You don't know. And so that's kind of what Jack-Jack represents. The cool thing is that the uh, audience of the first film knows that Jack-Jack has multiple powers, but the Parr family does not. So that's sort of an unexploded bomb that we light in this movie. I'm always fascinated, too, because, I mean, I've had the great pleasure of going to Pixar. I don't understand a thing that you guys do Neither you're behind do I. the computers. Just don't ask. It's best if you don't. But I'm fascinated by the technology and the ah. advancement of technology. In these intervening 14 years, how much has technology evolved to make this incarnation of the movie faster, different, more complex. Faster, stronger, yeah. Um, able to leap giant buildings in a single bath. Now, um, the, the medium is matured enough to where it's, it's hard to talk in sound bites about what's better. Um, anyone who works there knows that it's all over the place. There are tiny advancements happening all the time, and they amount to big adv advancements. But there's no single advancement anymore. When uh, computer animation was in its sort of infancy, you could say, this is the first film where we've ever been able to do fur, or this is the first film where we've ever been able to do light underwater, or whatever. But now it's moved along uh, enough so that it's really about a, a, a thousand small developments. And I just would say the movie looks richer, bigger, um, visually more what we wanted the first movie to look like. More incredible. There you go. Brad well Bird. said. Thank you so much. And this is Scott Orland. Till next time.